Praise, honor, and glory to the true and living God, our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, we've been looking at the news cycles. We were on point with the first two because we know that the powers that be, they are very big on astrology. And so by their astrological beliefs, one can see certain things uh, that they're planning or plotting to do and one can see through some of the false news stories that they put out here for me and you to keep us distracted, okay? And also to programmers. News is another part of programming just like any other programming, television programming, okay? And, uh, but they're programming certain aspects of their agenda during certain times and seasons. They do believe in times and seasons, not in the way Ecclesiastes describes it, but much in how they flip um, when the Lord says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And they flip that into saying, as above, so below. They do have a seasonal belief, okay? But it's not to everything there is a season per se. They believe that certain spirits can be conjured. I mean, you don't have to believe it. That's fine, it will leave you in the dark. Don't bother me, okay? But these cats have a belief system that's far beyond the average person's, okay? It's one of the reasons why their society is secret. They keep this belief system among themselves. Uh, there was a movie called um, uh, The Occult. Oh my goodness, it's, the name is escaping me, but I, but I do have the film. Um, it's a French film, it's subtitled, it, it's black and white. I believe it's from like the 30s or 40s. And the guy who uh, directed it, he ended up dead. But within that film, uh, within Eyes Wide Shut, within the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, within Rosemary's Baby, within so many films and movies, uh, Rosewood, if you watch it, you will see that there's something to this brotherhood and to uh, being a member of this brotherhood that puts you in certain places and spaces in the world that are not for the average Joe. So here during this time period, okay, according to their belief system, different than Aries and Taurus, in some respects, but similar in others, each one will deal with duality, each season, each quote unquote uh, astrological season that they believe in will deal with duality, but they believe that each season is more controlled by certain spirit forces than others. Gods, if you will, than others. The time of Aries, that God, Taurus, Bacchus. Well, Jim and I were talking about Mercury and, Mer and the Mercurian way. Mercury is the messenger, also the twins. So you will see lots of double number symbology such as this is 611 2016 we're in the midst of, of gemini and i saw an e online they sent me a a, a, a little notification there a thing there i don't ever read their stuff unless somebody sends me a link something interesting but um i don't even know the girl's last name for sure it looks like grimmy but i'm gonna tell you i knew the story was gonna be laced with it i just felt it I don't know nothing about this girl. All I saw was Christina Grimmy shot dead at 22 on Friday. And I said, now, I bet you if I look into this story without reaching, okay, without stretching the imagination, there should be signs all over here. Now, at the end of the day, more than just looking at how the enemy plays in their playbook and trying to get a bead on, you know, uh, what stories are just distractions and, you know, uh, what the enemy is trying to get us to believe. Okay, we also want to know what does it mean for the body of believers, you know, as how we should govern ourselves during this time. 
Well, we're going to get to that too, all right? But let's, let me first, if I can, frame the picture of what this season is to them for you. Okay, so Christina Grimmie shot dead at 22. And again, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing her name. I've never heard a girl before. I don't watch those shows. But uh, and unless when the nieces and nephews mention it, I don't know nothing about it. But she was from season six. And she came in third place, Duality. She was shot dead at 22. It was announced on the 11th, Duality. Season six was in 2014, which just so happens to be double sevens. And again, these are things that are big deals to these wizards and warlocks in power. They're wizards and warlocks. They just wear suits and, and uh, down the can dresses. Well, whoever's the, the uh, big deal now, whoever has been made the big deal by the portion of the powers that be that run fashion, because that too is part of programming. It's about control, okay? Mind control and control of the people. That's why they put out these phony stories and that's why they create this phony atmosphere that double-mindedness is to be in the air. And they know or they believe that they know because they believe that they're guided by spirits, okay? By ancient ones, old ones. Some of them know flat out by jinn, demon. By any other name, still the same. Okay, but they believe that they're, uh, they're given a certain spell. Okay, if you cast this spell during this season on the people, then it will give them this condition. This curse, the curse of confusion, double-mindedness. So why is it so important to create confusion and double-mindedness during the time of Gemini, the teenager, the rebellious teenager, the twins? Let's continue. And, and you're gonna answer these questions for yourself as the picture is painted. And, you know, un untainted. I'm not going to have to stretch. Well, so so she was shot dead at 22 on Friday. It's announced on 6-11. She came in third place in season six. Again, duality, double three and six in 2014, which is double sevens. These are important numbers to them. They believe in numerology, astrology, the new age, or the metaphysical beliefs that they believe the kings of the earth were taught by the fallen angels, also called Anunnaki or Neteru, a variety of names, okay, to the different nations to whom they came. They have different names. Same game. The names change. Let's continue. Now, she was gunned down by an unidentified assailant. Now, who just goes to a concert and guns this girl down for nothing, right? But she's gunned down by an unidentified assailant at an Orlando, Florida concert. What do we know of Orlando, Florida? Again, you know, we can you can say we're stretching, but this is for the, the advanced, okay? This is the advanced class. When you come here, if you own Goofy Goober status, you will be escorted out. Hello? All right, so now, and, and you know, it's only right. I don't come, I don't come to your spot tripping. <laughs> and my nephew's not happening. But so, Orlando, Florida is also a place that we know has been accused of being a mecca for mind control, mind control programs, uh, culminating with or uh, at the apex, we can talk about Epcot Center and people who have uh, given their testimony, ex-mind control victims and SRA, satanic ritual abuse victims who have cited Disney or Disney World, Disneyland as being a place where they are taken for brainwashing, programming, and for pedophile activity. Again, once these men in power in their secret groups, but they do dress up in funny cloaks and things. They see, they try to get as much in character as possible so they can create realism in the ritual and really get the result of the quote unquote God in their eyes, demon spirit in ours. So they can get that, that God 
to be pleased with the setting, okay? To be reminded of when he came to the old king, when it came to the old kings and queens, Psalms 2 and 2, way back in the day, to poison their minds and teach them the civilized way, technology and how to control the people, how to create great civilizations. Once you create a civilization, you have a lot of people to manage. In a civilization, you're making sure that different people are doing different things to keep the civilization running. In a civilization, you have military force. All of these things require your ability to control things. And when men decided that they don't want wise counsel or a council of elders or the community themselves to decide upon things, then they have to figure out ways to control large numbers of people. Can one man control thousands of people? Like a king would. By threats of violence to a certain degree. But even greater than that, you have to have some sort of cheat, okay? You have to have a cheat, cheat code that you can put in there. In order to control huge numbers of people, their deception that has always been involved when kings and queens would put together their civilizations. Part of the glue that would hold together those civilizations would be mythology about the greatness of the king or the greatness of the nation or the land. Same things they did in Nazi Germany, same things they do in Babylon, USA. And again, Babylon is a world system. I always want to think they know something I don't know. And you, and I'm sure you do lots of things that we don't even need to hear about. But this is, you know, this is something I've been involved in this for a long time and from the wrong position for the longest time, you know. I was a Yah, Yah Anu Allah. Lord forgive me. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, no, excuse me, Yah Anu Allah, I'm in thought. I forgot. That's a lot. That's more than a mouthful. That's worse than that old Robert Jackson Jr. But, you know, so I've gone down those pathways and, you know, I did it like you're supposed to do it in one of the blackest cities in America with a lot of pro-black folks around you and leaders and, and, and whatnot, going to all the meetings, hooking up with the people that you're supposed to hook up with and getting down to the bottom of it and just seeing that it too was a game. And the older I get, the more I see the spiritual implications of the game. I suppose first I saw the psychological implications. Because I looked around and although the brothers would have a certain mindset about certain positive things, they all also seemed to share a certain mindset about certain negative things, like the way that they would treat their women or the way that they was handling business a lot of times. You know. I really saw that with my 5% brothers. They was, you know, I leave the street. But, so, I'm saying all that to say because as we go into the next things that I began to see in the news cycle, that's going to, that's going to uh, play prominently too, but also to let you know that yes, you know, I've. I've been down those roads, and that's why I know certain things about their playbook, okay? It was mine at one time. Whenever you're into the Egyptian or Commission mystery systems, okay, by any other name, okay, uh, Egyptian metaphysics, whatever you want to call it, Egyptian yoga, whatever you want to call it, though. We don't use Egypt, bro. We use Commit. Whatever you, I, I was there when that started, bro, okay? Ever been to the Commission School of Martial Arts? I have. Okay, so you know those those things uh, those things uh, put you in more of a jam in the end of the day because you begin to operate out of pride, prejudice, then denial. 
Yeah, because when you operate out of pride or prejudice or racism, then you're, you also have to deny something too, like your problems, your issues, your shortcomings. And, you know, so, but I digress to some degree. Now watch how we're gonna tie that back in. All right, so now let's, let's just finish up here on Christina Grimmie. Okay, now, just to put the nail in it, check it out. She was at an Orlando, Florida concert of a band she was touring with called Before You Exit. This was the name of the band that she was touring with when she exited by way of an unidentified assailant gunning her down at age 22. Interesting. And again, what does Mercury also represent? Laugh now, cry later, or the drama and comedy, masks, the acting, entertainment. I told you on the uh, first one when Jim and I was coming in, I said, watch out for all the entertaining uh, action that's going to go on and all the sacrifices in that arena. Really, you should see the Imaginarium of, of uh, Dr. Parnassus. Uh, bear with it, okay? It's about, it is a very stylized way to try to disguise. And I mean, so stylized, it gets muddy and corny in certain places. But they're trying to disguise the whole system of, they're, you know, they're using entertainment to steal people's souls. And there's, you know, a right-hand path and a left-hand path, both really wicked. Because although Dr. Parnassus may seem to be the good guy, as you watch the movie more, you begin to see, no, he's as bad as the other guy. They're both trying to trap people's souls. But the movie begins with Mercury coming out on the stage with the actor that is rolling with Dr. Parnassus. Dr. Parnassus rolls with actors. He rolls with performers, okay? He rolls with these two performers and a midget, and they do a traveling show. And when the movie comes on, they show you the, the uh, little fold-out stage they have on their little truck there. They unfold the stage, and out comes the male actor. There's a male and a female. Okay, both of them young. They're both representing the young person trying to make it in the business. And the male and the female, again, showing Gemini its relationship to entertainment. The performer, because the ability to change spirits is supposed to be higher during this time. Can we say that? And the boy and the girl, or the male and, and, and female actor, are symbolic of that. But when it first comes on, the male actor steps out in full Mercury costume. He even says, I am Mercury, messenger of the gods. see a lot more things uh, concerning entertainment and the blood sacrifice rituals in the news 
and things concerning duality. Uh, teenage angst and anger ramped up. Work, hustle, and money. Let's let's look at some more. The duality is going to really jump out at you now. Again, Gemini was called the messenger of the gods, and so we look at uh, the messages that will the messages that will be sent through the messengers that are the news reporters during this cycle and season. Okay, we're going to look at a few now. Just to cap off the Christina Grimmie, her brother tackled the dude who then shot himself. Again, her brother, the brother and sister. Gemini is the brother and sister blending of the two but after her brother tackled the dude the dude shot himself okay classic Manchurian candidate um, mind control programmed assassin behavior a single tweet was posted on Grimmy's Twitter page Saturday morning this morning and the tweet was the end while touring with a band you know she was touring with a band called Before You Exit. So, there that is. Now, you're not a believer. You don't have to be. Muhammad Ali. And Kimbo Slice. Do we have any obvious twin or duality symbolism here? Well, sure. They're both fighters. They both made their living with their fisting. Gemini is also related to the arms and shoulders, but heavyweights generally have those. But let's look at something, something else. Ali went to the pinnacle, the height of his sport. He went through all of the doors that were really at that time closed for black celebrities. I mean, there weren't many, but he was one of the first ones to have a, you know, a doll made after himself. I had a Muhammad Ali doll. I didn't ask for it. Somebody must have bought it for me because I couldn't have been but three or four. But he was such a big deal, you know, the parents and, and the, the grown folks be making a big deal out of something. And then they say, don't you want a Muhammad Ali doll or something like that to the child? And then the child knows something about it. So, you know, he, he was a black superhero, uh, quote unquote. He was a superhero to many. Uh, but in his earlier stages, let's say this, before the Parkinson yeah. agenda went down, which I believe was a government agenda that attacked both Mr. Parkinson and Mr. Clay. If I'm going to name him Clay, I'm going to call him Clay. And Muhammad Ali. Okay? Now, coming to America, okay? All itself what he wants to. Now, uh, the similarities are glaring. He went to the top, the pinnacle. He was at the top. As far as the all seeing eye of the pyramid and black entertainers and athletes go, much as we love him so, how could he have not been involved? Even his children went into the game. Had a daughter become a heavyweight champion. What type of Masonic dream is that, you know, um, Morneau from a trip into the supernatural said that they will ask you what, you know, what type of, what type of gift do you want the spirits to give you? And he said he wanted a gift of gambling. He wanted to be able to hit, you know, uh, 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 went into horses. I believe Jay-Z said, I want me a bad woman like I could never pull with my gameless self in life. I believe Kadeem Hardison said something similar. Got Shante Moore. It's just some I've always felt in, in my bones. I can't prove that. But, not that but yeah, I think sometimes, you know, folks ask for something. Well, you know, could my daughter be the heavyweight champion? I didn't have no sons. Sure. I mean, it was that. I mean, what are the odds? What are the odds? Seriously, mathematical odds. What's what's the odds of that? So, and, and I mean, you can look at so many things. He, he, when he quieted down, after they injected him with what they injected him in to cause 
a nervous system failure because he didn't get hit in the head like that. We talked about this in uh, Brotherhood of the Ball. Okay, we talked about the whole sports game. And I told you I believe that that was a phantom punch and all of that. And Ali was inserted. He was allowed. Okay, you don't just let a brother loud mouth like that and they lynching him for that. At that time, he was still getting lynched for that. This time, some places, I'm sure. But at that time, everybody knew it. And so, in my opinion, it was like a controlled opposition. And the very best controlled opposition is one that you believe. Well, all that aside, because we dealt with that in Brotherhood of the, of the Bell, and we're not getting into an Ali debate. Muhammad I mean, Ali was, he was sweet, he was sweet. Okay, but you know, did he do some things that, I mean, as far as we know now in our modern climate, you know, you have to be plugged in to be able to do, of course he did, cash things, okay, you know, including being involved in the Masonic Nation of Islam. Oh, oh, somebody hurt. Okay, but we gonna stop with that. But let's dig this. Muhammad Ali did it, age 74, born in 42. Kimbo Slice did it, age 42, born in 74. What a coincidence. And Kimbo Slice was the opposite end of the ladder, if I may. He was sweet, but he represented the street. He represented not going and, and getting down with the elite and being put on a pedestal. He represented, I got to get out here and just to stay credible and relevant, put my life on the line. No phantom punches here. And yeah, a couple times they put him on a little show and let him do a little cameo here and there, but he was struggling. I know he was struggling. I don't believe Muhammad Ali was struck. But, but I believe that they saw him as such a charismatic character, you know, uh, charming to the ladies, hardcore to the brothers. That's what they like to use. I argue that's what they did with Tupac. All right, but now, so you see the duality, isn't that glaring duality, y'all? That's glaring in your face, okay? All right, let's let's look at some more. But but not just to put the cherry on top. Ali, the first. Okay, between Ali and Kimbo, Ali came first. He died first, June third. To show you more of the duality. Double that. Okay, for the second, when Kimbo Slice came second. Duo, dual, double, the third, and you get the six. Now, am I making this up? If I'm making this up, uh, y'all know any, uh, are you looking for screenwriters, whatnot? Uh, please do email me, unplug them at gmail.com. Because if I can make up some stuff like this and just make it connect, you know, put some respect on my name. <laughs> my cousin told me. It's just an aside. My cousin told me he heard some, somehow that, or did I hear that uh, Birdman was really going up there because he was going to come out. He might as well come out. He, he, he been out. He out and walking down the street, flailing his arms and two snaps up with a circle. He is all the way out. Out the closet, out the house too. Show the world, but I digress. So yes, and again, it had to do with entertaining. They were both entertainers. In this era, where people need a more, or rather people have been conditioned to think they need and want a more vile form of entertainment than ever before, everything is worse. Everything is worse. This meant also that the appetite for violence, just like the appetite for sex, is going up increase. The appetite for violence has gone up also increase. 
increased greatly. Almost like the movie with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Running Man. You know, where people were entertained by watching you fight for your life. Kimbo Slice lived that life. Entertainment. Mercury. The Mercurian way, too. Mischief. To jack you in the end. Muhammad Ali got lots of women in his day. I mean, you know, you don't walk around talking about you pretty. And you ain't trying to hammer everything, okay? Muhammad Ali got a lot out of that game. And if anybody don't know if the boxing game is devilish, have mercy. Brother Charles can testify. But I mean, you know. You haven't lived long enough. You haven't heard enough stories. Okay, and, and just keep living. Be real. All right, now let's let's move on now. I also saw this come through in the news feed. And I, you know, it just, I ignore a lot of the stories. And I, I don't mean, a, I don't mean a conscious, intentional ignore. I mean, when I look, I feel the Holy Spirit say, move on. Yeah, that's that, uh, that's that, 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 that's that. And then something catches me, like, doo -doo 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 -doo. that's what happened. So don't feel personal. People feel personal. I sent you something, you didn't look at, uh, but I'm, uh, you know, I, hey, I got orders. Nobody trumps my orders. I think people have learned that about me. In the face of persecution, signifying, I got to hold on to mine. Okay, but now, so I saw this other story, labor and unrest in Egypt. And I, I wondered, I said, is CC still the president of Egypt? President of Egypt. Muhammad Ali, president of Egypt. Muhammad Ali Pasha. Well, no, isn't that something? I wasn't even looking for that. Uh, but now, see, that would be making some stretch. I'm not even going to do that. Although it may not be that, because I certainly didn't say Muhammad Ali, president of Egypt. <laughs> but let's see here. Let's see here. We're going to look back at that. Interesting that there was a president of Egypt named Muhammad Ali. Okay, and during this season of Gemini, the president of Egypt is named Abdel Fattah El Sisi. They just call him Sissy. Excuse me, Sissy. Let me show you the word. This is a way that they play off of your intelligence, but it is also a way to split the mind in two. The double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. If they can get you to believe two opposing realities at the same time, they can essentially short-circuit you. They believe that's the key to mind control. Because then you're in a state of confusion. And when a person is in a state of confusion, that's why they do the uh, the um, uh, ritual abuse things the way that they do to create trauma and confusion in the individual's mind, fear, intense fear, and then the programming can begin. Well, this is what they believe. But they gave us the name, ISIS, right in the midst of the, I mean, come on. I was dyslexic. I'd have had a fit. ISIS is the president. They're telling you right then and there that ISIS is running things now. Egypt is symbolic to them. Okay. Now they're having labor and unrest in Egypt. While Sisi is the president. It is, again, this is news code. Okay. It's letting you know that it's about to be some issues among the uh, Egyptians and the working class of the Egyptians was at one time the Israelites. <laughs> and it's gonna be some issues because labor and un, you know, they, there is unrest because of lack of labor. Not just in old Egypt, but in new Egypt too over here, quote unquote. And the young uh, nephew, it's hot today. This, this is the first hot day. I am I'm drenched in sweat. I'm sitting here looking like a hot mess for real. And the nephew 
kids was walking up and down the street with their shirts off. You know, those that's not old enough to grip. The ones that's gripping is whipping up and down the street, playing panda and jump man, jump man, jump man, jump man. Yeah, that's yeah. Them the two songs. The similarity to them spiritually, but uh, I digress. So, but unrest always tends to ramp up in the summertime. Hot and bothered. A long, hot summer. They they uh, they help to attribute the riots in the 60s to, to that. And uh, especially here in Detroit, the 67 riot. You know, usually that's during the summertime. Again, oftentimes riots are controlled, opposition, activities started by the CIA. They'll start the riot at times. Many times this has been done. We know that they did this during the Arab Spring. They did this during the Occupy movement. Do y'all remember the Occupy movement? Has everyone forgotten? So I believe they're about to do it again, like Portier and Cosby. And then you wonder why, you know, some, some folk get off and then some folk don't. But, you know, nobody gets off. When you play the devil's game, in order for him to maintain his title, he's got to jack you in the end, baby. You can't get away scot-free with everything you had and all your money. And, all your material and your master reels and all that new law. You can die a legend though. You can be as a god. And now, Kimbo Slice is a legend. It's very interesting too. That was also uh, mentioned or caricatured in the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, which was Heath Ledger's last film. In case you don't know, Heath Ledger played the Joker. Lots of people, lots of eyes were opened, I believe, uh, during his death because of that, uh, his death and Paul Walker, when those two deaths happened, I think a lot of the young people start looking into the Illuminati thing and uh, uh, sacrifice ritual, who had not done so before. So the Lord, you know, what the devil means for bad, God will, will, will turn around for the good and all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Now, and so he's allowing certain things to happen too because of his love for you. It is a last chance call. Last call, y'all. And he's trying to let the last few stragglers who's on the fence and standing at the door trying to see if they're going to come in, come on in now. dramatic things are happening during the drama and comedy of Gemini, huh? From, I mean, from the prince on down. Even the, even Afeni Shakur's death, that was ill because it all fit this astrological bill. Dear mama, the mother got a season. And, and also this too. Along with the labor and unrest and the rioting, uh, you had the gorilla in the news cycle. And that one stumped me for a second. I mean, it stumped me totally. The Holy Spirit had to put together some other pieces of the puzzle. Okay, and a couple of those other pieces was the death of Muhammad Ali and Roots returning to television. For those of you who don't know, Roots was a very big deal and it was instrumental in black culture, especially during the 70s. And during the 1970s, there was a, a strong black consciousness movement. Um, people were very interested in finding out where they came from, quote unquote. And so Roots was major in that. Um, Alex Haley wrote the book. Alex Haley also is known for writing Malcolm X biography. So he became a go-to writer, I believe, for the consciousness community. And not even just I believe, but he also was doing, uh, doing a promotional tour, okay? 
Um, even on the Sanford and Son episode, Funny You Don't Look It, where Fred, uh, quote unquote, discovers uh, his Jewish ancestry. And then, of course, a Khazar Ashkenazi is used to turn it right back around and make it seem as if he was a clown and he didn't know what he had found. But um, even on that show, when Bubba is talking to Fred, he mentions Alex Haley and he says, uh, yeah, you know, uh, you can do what that fella Alex Haley did. Uh, he had his uh, ancestry looked up and you know he found out this and the third. So, oh, 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 you mean to tell me I could do that too, Bubba? And so they go on their little adventure and they use something kind of like what you see today with the Ancestry.com thing, okay? And in the in the show, in Sanford and Son, it ends up being a scam, which is exposed to them by a quote-unquote Jewish man who owns a shop in the Jewish section of town. And Fred goes down there to uh, try to talk to him about, you know, what what he had found. And of course, by the time the episode is all done, the whole thing is switched all around. And, you know, I was kind of disappointed because some of us have seen that clip uh, from certain camps, taking an excerpt and, you know, put it in their video. And it's kind of a, you know, what you, I'm sure it's not meant to be misconstrued, but we have to understand that it wasn't an episode where Red Fox just let his Jewish writers tell that tale, okay? <laughs> this was black programming at its finest. And really, within the uh, black power movement and the black nationalism movement, the Pan-African movement, black awareness, commission science, cash agents. Because this, really, that movement was born out of pride we know where pride comes from, okay? You can say it was born out of frustration. Okay. Those who were sincere in the movement joined the movement because of frustrations, because of the injustice that they were suffering, and because they were just plain old sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so when the powers that be get wind of the people feeling this way, in order to keep control of the civilization, so uh oh, something is going to bubble, something is going to pop. They say, well, if something is going to pop anyway, let's control the explosion, a controlled demolition. Order out of chaos. They create something, only to destroy it so they can build something else, problem, reaction, solution. So the people cry out, there's a problem. Look at this injustice, look at this police brutality, look at this racism, I can't get a job, I live in poverty, the inner city is jacked up. Look at the condition of our homes. And the powers that be get wind of it, really the spirits that are in concert with them all right, there's always a fifth element to everything, a spirit behind something, sometimes more than one. And so the spirits that are behind them tell them, hey, the people are whispering, it's time to put this type of play in motion. Now, who becomes most satisfied? Aries is the baby. Okay, here we go again, speaking from their lexicon, right? Aries is the baby. Taurus is the toddler throwing a fit and just talking for the first time. Y'all hush. Hush. In Gemini, I'm supposed to be the teen. Rebellious. A little mischievous. They like to make rappers Gemini because it's also the message. Three, off the top of my head, Biggie, Pop, Ice Cube. Three three thousand. Okay. But they like to use them because of what they symbolize. You know what? Excuse me. What? Uh, 
they like to use people that they believe are born under that spirit or that astrological sign because of what it symbolizes to them in their mind. Now, let's tie this in. Harambe, the gorilla, roots in Muhammad Ali. Now, Harambe, ever been to a black conscious meeting and they end it or begin it, or during some portion of it, they say, Harambe, it was a Kenyan workers chant. And really it had more to do with like uh, the UAW's use of solidarity than anything. And it really was one of those movements like you saw happening in Russia and even in Germany to get the workers in line. Okay, still, okay, same thing. You know something's about to pop. The powers that be get a sense of the workers are very upset. They're distraught. They're off the chain. What can we do to control this explosion that's about to happen? And so they put out the leaders, you know, they'll create leaders or they'll buy them, one or the other. They'll buy people who are already in leadership in those groups and organizations, African Pan National, whatever, Pan, Pan, my man, or they'll create some. They'll send out trained agents who will act as your friends and look like one of you. So my understanding is that's, that's what had happened in Kenya. Uh, the Kenyan government put some things in place to get the workers together and to make it appear as if there was a change in things, a change in regime, a change in ideas, a change in theme, when it's the same controllers, just in a different disguise. Same thing that happens when it switches from being a, a democratic White House to a Republican White House or a Democratic Senate to a Republican one. It does not really matter, but it's just that they need to change the disguise. The people are getting too hip to one side. That's one reason why they allow for us to have what they're calling a black president. Because I think too many people were getting suspicious. And you know, they had fell for the pre-programmed black and white chessboard game lie that okay, this is something only white people do. Some of you brothers and sisters really need to study the boule and you need to give proper honor to your brother Steve Coakley. Steve Coakley lost his life in this quote unquote conspiracy game, teaching us about those who are in our community, who are used as agent provocateurs, who are used as agents of change, but really for the elite. But they are to do it in the guise and the disguise of a man from the street. Okay. And so Harambe the gorilla roots black power symbolism. Again, we're not gorillas or monkeys. I believe it was in A Time to Kill. Or one of them movies, Mississippi Burning. Uh, actor was playing old Prejudice Nick, and he said, NAACP, what does that stand for? Niggas, apes, animals, coons, and possums. So there's always been this stereotype to try to relate us to monkeys. Even when Fred Capone Esther and say, you know, I can stick your face in some dough and make some gorilla cookies. You know, all of this is, is still pointing to this idea. It's, it's a mistaken idea and it's a slur of the black man as some, you know, as an animal unable to control his behavior, going wild in the pee now, wilding out like DMX, all of us. Okay, we just got a DMX button, all of us, okay? But that's the symbolism there. And then the fact that Harambe the gorilla was not that way. I ain't gonna talk no more about that dang gorilla. But that was too much in the news for that not to have been coded. So I didn't know what the code was for until I got a little more. The death of Muhammad Ali, again, he represents. You're not supposed to have no idols. You shouldn't have any idols. But he did represent like a black Superman. He represented an idol. That's what he represented. Now, and then Roots. What Roots represents is um, a lie okay 
but it's supposed to okay what you're supposed to think if you're a goofy goober is oh it helps bring bring you back in touch with your history no it's not because when you go to ancestor.com and these different places familytree.com different ones they're going to spin you around they're going to tell you some lies that's the purpose of that craze in the last days and I believe it was the purpose before, because I'm gonna tell you what Roots did for me when it came on when I was a young link. It made me feel bad. It didn't make me feel good. It made me feel bad when I was too young to understand it. It made me feel bad that we was portrayed like that. And to see everybody treating us like that, you don't understand the significance of that as a child. Then when I got to be a teenager, where you can control your opinions and your angst a little bit better, at it, but still, it's still not right. And it makes you angry, but in a different type of way. Okay, at least when we was coming up, because we had we had a lot of knowledge wrapped, and you know, we, you know, with all of the bad and the trickery going on, there was at least a choice to be able to listen to someone kick some lyrics. It wasn't just about guns and drugs and sex. So we did have that. So there was a little more control, but it still made me mad. And it drove me into Islam. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I remember there's a scene in Roots where it's made very clear that, uh, you know, Negroes is practicing the white man's religion and our real religion is uh, Islam. It's made clear in Roots, which is not true. Before Islam, there was Hebrew. That's why you find so many things derived from it. Asylam and Ashalom. Come on, bro. Okay. El Elo and Allah. Which, which still, that's a different thing because we got, now we have an understanding we haven't always had. And that, that I haven't always had. I was wrong in the, uh, 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 um, what do and the one about Jesus' name, where I pointed out, I said, well, you know, we we, we need to come off come off of being so hard on them for saying Allah, because it's just, uh, you know, it, it seems to be a derivative of El Lo, which is supposed to be all good. But then you find the stuff about the mother goddess a lot, A-L-L-A-T. And so you have to make correction in that. But what Roots did for me is it further pushed the idea in my mind that what my grandma and them was doing and their way of religion and their way of thinking was obsolete. And it wasn't working. The white man gave them that. We supposed to be African. And then you want to find out what tribe you're from and all that type. And you find out the difficulties in those things immediately. I did as a young man, if you were serious, you know, and you seriously pursue things to the end, you're going to find the end game of this, and you're going to see that it is a game. But it's getting ramped up. That's my point. That's why Roots was brought out now. The long, hot summer. And, you know, nieces and nephews didn't give two hoots about Roots. Okay? But you heard how Roland Martin and Snoop Dogg had that exchange, which, you know, they both, at the end of the day, they... They served the same master and may belong to the same lodge. But it was to create dialogue because the youngsters wasn't checking for it like that. And Snoop giving his opinion of why. Well, you know, we, we, we're tired of seeing y'all portray us like this. You know, why don't y'all show how far we've come now? I guess that's what Empire is supposed to be, Snoop. And then Roland Martin just, you know, checked out on him. You know, you need to quit smoking weed. You need to invest in some of these film projects and some of these things that'll show our history the, need, the, the, the way it needs to be shown and that needs to be shown or whatever. And they both is, they both is who lay butt kissing busters. And I have liked Snoop, but I, I'm all, I'm all out of passes. So, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, let him do his thing, whatever, all right, but, they're all gonna have to pay the piper in the end. And so, you know, they'll they'll play that role too. Just like with Snoop and Roland Martin, 
I don't believe that was nothing real whatsoever. I think that they had a difference of opinion on it. And they were to represent the two sides of the argument about roots. Okay? And to get the dialogue going. But it didn't really go too far. Because these young brothers is ready for the world to hear. We are not apes. We are not gorillas. Ice Cube had the gorillas in the midst with uh, the lynch mob. You know, gorillas in the midst, that was their thing. And they was playing off of the fact we have two meanings for the one phonetic uh, uh, word, uh, gorilla. You have a meaning of a big, strong, powerful ape. And then you have the meaning of a fighter, uh, like the Honduras. Even the way the Native Americans fought was uh, kind of guerrilla style, but of a soldier, you know, kind of a mercenary or a soldier with with uh, with, with you know, not necessarily mercenary, but a soldier with very few resources, but able to pull them together and wage a decent war campaign, or to defend themselves at least, sometimes. But so you have the gorilla as the soldier and then you have the gorilla as this big power ape. Ever see Planet of the Apes? The big power ape was, what well, it was uh, Michael Clark Duncan, okay, in the older Planet of the Ape remakes that they made, I think with Mark Wahlberg, and then in the more recent reboot that was sweet with um, Caesar, the ape, okay, the CGI ape, that they made look very human and, you know, gave it blue eyes to try to throw, throw everything off, which, you know, that, that's saying something. That's saying that, you know, that's a sign of intelligence and not a deficiency of any kind. And, you know, that's, that's fine. But what they were saying all throughout the movie, and, you know, I know you've heard brothers talk about this before it's really not hard to see but all throughout the movie they made analogies of really what I think they fear as far as the fear of the black planet when I say they I'm talking about the powers that be and not fear as much as they know they need to control this explosion let me say that better okay. they always have a fear when they run a big power move plan because things fall apart but this one is one I think that they're gonna push, they're gonna, you know, squeeze this pimple till it pop. These young nephews, you know, and nieces, many of them, they're wandering about, really, too close to the edge. Don't push them. And you know, when I was 15, 16, I was working. Jobs was available. The school, Mumford, set us up with a job, uh, job training program. They taught you how to act on an interview. You know, not to mention, you know, your mama and your daddy and your granny and your grandma and all of them, your auntie and uncle, they all, Excited that you're about to go on your first interview. Everybody give you pointers. Okay. Not to mention there was a trend in the rap music I was listening to at 15, 16, 17. And the trend was to speak clearly, to have a good command and grasp of the language. That's what made you a better MC. Quote unquote, master of ceremonies, Masonic terms. I told you. Some of you. But anyway, so we had certain advantages. I had a suit. If nothing else, you had an Easter suit. All that stuff is gone now. Think of the average 14, 15, 16 year old. Do we have a suit he could wear and get a job in? How would he be talking during the interview? How would he be speaking throughout the interview? Does he have a decent command or grasp of the English language. Where is he going to find the job? 
Will they hire him? Perhaps he has been tatted up because that's what his peer group does. Maybe he doesn't have the right look. Maybe he's not tatted up and he just looks like he's been stressed out. Maybe his eyes is ghetto yellow. Maybe he's very dark and scarred. Maybe he just had that look in his eye, like he don't play no games and that look just don't go away. He gonna sit across from that man at that interview and scare that man half to death. There are so many obstacles that these young people face. We should pray for them every day and really, if they're not your number one concern, you know, it's a real disgrace. You know, when the squares and, uh, you know, any of you square pants, Pastor Pope Chop Juniors, who have a problem with the way we make a presentation for the people who, who need it most. You, know, you can have that problem, but it's not gonna go away, so you might as well. My concern is for the lost sheep of the tribe of Israel, first and foremost. And these young brothers and sisters, they speak a certain language. Now, I don't have to be vulgar to speak that language, but because I have an experience in the music business and I have a brother who has an experience that we share side by side. This was my group member that makes these beats. We making these beats together in more ways than you know. Brother Dwight does his part, I do mine. Now again, you don't like it. Let the dough knob hit you with a good Lord split you. But it's going to continue until the Lord tells me to close the door. And, and, oh, please believe me. I see the orders coming down the pipeline. The music will soon stop and it won't be no game plan, no cutting in pictures, no video, nothing. We're going to have to just do it straight. I see it coming. I see it coming as they shut things down. So while we have the the ability to use multimedia to our advantage and to bait our hook as fishers of men with such, to bring in the people who are not coming in voluntarily, and that y'all who have the nerve to criticize is too scared to go out and talk to. If you don't like it, hike it. Now let's continue. So we looked at that. Okay, because this is gonna be aimed at the nephews, the teens and tweens. I believe that by the time we get into what they call Leo, okay, it gets hottest. You know, Stevie Wonder had the album hotter than July, but emotions are, are, are high in those seasons. And it starts here. Gemini, what they call Gemini, Cancer, what they call Cancer and Leo, and what they call Leo. This is when they heat up things, when they want angst, or when they want a riot, or when they want anger. They do it when it's hot. People are easily, much more easily agitated when it's hot. That's why people say, hey man, be cool. Oh man, he's a hothead. And I show him hot, I missed that three days yesterday. Hot, red. So they're going to, uh, and, and during the time of Gemini, the duality of red and blue, you're gonna hear a lot more transhumanism news. I'm expecting big Caitlyn news. This is the perfect season, red and blue mixed together. The male and the female principle or the aggressive aggressive and the passive aggressive principle blended together to create the purple, which is for their royal one, who they believe to be perfect aspects of male power and feminine power or masculine power and feminine power or the passive excuse me the aggressive aggressive war violence bloodshed give it here and the passive aggressive oh it's in your best interest if you do such and such well only for your safety are we going to make sure that this is to, you know the way your mama do it <laughs> But 
but okay, I believe we can put that away. And, and now let's get into what the good book has to say. Uh, oh, well, well, it was a couple of more uh, things. Uh, the young man uh, in Detroit and the three dollars and uh, that 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 whole thing. You know, I'm still looking into that uh, story to see what I can pull out as far as the occult messages of it. But to be quite honest with you, um, I had been in somewhat of a media blackout to a certain degree because I didn't have any um, access to local uh, local news and I was pretty much isolated and hadn't heard the word of mouth concerning uh, the young man really until a couple days ago. And so I'm, I'm going to look more into that. And then also, uh, Sister Tanti, I want to thank you for pointing out um, some potential screenwriter secret in a black exploitation flick called Three the Hard Way. She says it seems to be some foreshadowing of the Flint water crisis in there. Okay, and then to, well, to end, I'm, I'm going to end with the first duality story that came across my desk uh, from Sister uh, Natasha Pope, who picked up on it right away, sent, it, sent what to me is you know, the, the epitome of a duality story during the Gemini news cycle. And so we're going to end with that, uh, but let's get to the business at hand. Now let's look at what the Lord says about a double-minded man. Okay, open up your Bibles to the book of James. We're going to be looking at chapter one. And let's just, let's just read down, okay? Let's start from the top. Chapter one, the purpose of tests. This is a time of being tested. You'll be tried by the fire, you'll come out as pure gold. David was tested by Goliath and became king. An ancestor of the Messiah true and living. The Lord shows us time and time again throughout scripture, you know, when we are challenged, that we are rewarded when we are victorious. Never take the position of a victim for you have the victory in Christ Jesus. Remember that, in the midst of your challenge, don't take the victim's position. Because who was the victim when, when David was challenged by Goliath? Who was the victim at the end? Oh, you don't hear me. He cut his head off. Goliath was the victim. So even when it looks like that you're the victim and something is much too big for you, if you hold the victory in the Lord Jesus Christ like you're supposed to, if you stand fast, hold fast to what ye have. Don't get shook and thrown to and fro with all the new doctrine coming around. Signs and wonders that if it were possible, it would deceive the very elect. We're being tested as a body. It was a big test with the Mandela effect, huge test. And some people passed with flying colors and some people failed horribly. Failed so much, put shame on the teacher. Because, but, but you know, I don't blame nobody because that's what it was designed for. But it just shows you where you stand in chapter 24, 24, man. Matthew, are you one of the very elect? If you're one of the very elect, they tightest deceptions won't deceive you. Didn't move me a bit. Where's Jack Van Impey when you need him? Jack Van Impey, he, he, he's in Troy, Michigan. Perhaps you've seen him before. I'm not telling you to go donate to Jack Van Impey Ministries and join his ministry and Jack Van Impey is the truth. I'm telling you, I'm very impressed and always have been. It, it, it just about tickles me at Jack Van Impey's way of the elder, his way, his skill. Jack Van Impey can talk about anything and tell you a verse in the Bible that go alongside 
Could you imagine having a conversation with Dr. Jack Van Inken over coffee? And you just talking to him randomly about something? Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, these, these days it's really something else. Dr. Jack ain't easy. Isaiah chapter 57, verse 1. The righteous perish and no man layeth to heart, and merciful men are taken away. You know, I could just skip. But that's what we need in this time. You and I can't do that. Now maybe you know your Bible much better than I do mine. So maybe you know all of the things that are right and wrong in the Bible, you know, because you've been reading it and scouring it for, for God knows how long, like Dr. Jack Van Impey or somebody. And so you can say unequivocally that your memory is infallible. And it used to say lion, and now it says wolf. Well, and, and, and don't put words in my mouth. I didn't say a lion is the same thing as a wolf. So I look like I'm two. I said, I realized the meaning was not lost for me. First of all, I know both the lion and the lamb represent the Messiah. So it's kind of interesting if you, okay, so the Messiah gonna lay down with the Messiah. Or, oh, 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 the tribe of Judah is going to finally join and accept the Messiah. Well, what about this? Did you see this other layer in the three-dimensional, I mean, which I knew that anyway because I lived the life and I read Isaiah Jeremiah. So, yes, I know that the tribe of Judah is going to finally wake up out of their crazy minds. It's happening. Okay. But what I also saw was the nature of things would change. This aggressive spirit over this world, this violent spirit over the land and the fear of the violent man would one day ch would, would change. To where the wolf has a nature that's ravenous and, and cunning and you, know, you look at it as symbolically bad for some reason, for some reason. Made our dogs inherently bad, but we don't get into that. What I saw it as was something with a very aggressive nature will be able to coexist with something with a very peaceful nature. That's what I recognized it as. And then as far as the other uh, parts and portions of scripture, according to the old heads, the elders, and I have to go with them, because they say they remember, those things didn't change. But, and, and, and you know, again, resistance will be futile. I'm, I, I, you know, not, not about to debate it because this is where you should stand. The word of God is infallible, cannot and will not be usurped by any devil from hell, any goofy goober of a man. And whenever there's an issue in interpretation, it's on our end that there's a problem people have been reading and studying this word for too long and the elders and those who are really acquainted with the Lord of the book as well as the book of the Lord did not get shook one bit and, and, uh, and I put myself in that category excuse me not of one of the elders, but of one of the people who, well, maybe they did do some demonic manipulation. That's what I said. But I also said, that's why the Lord said that the word of the Lord should be written on the tablet of your heart in case the ink and the paper of man does some kind of magic trick before your eyes. It can happen, it's material. Why would there be a threat of if any man, you know, uh, takes away from the uh, words of this book? If a man could not attempt to do so. And again, the way that that's worded, you know, again, it ain't what you think. Because there are those of us right now who are operating out of right brain thinking and those who are operating out of left brain thinking. There are those operating out of the Holy Spirit and those who are operating out of their logic. And your logic is what the devil loves to manipulate. Your logic and your faith in your intellect, which includes your memory. 
But enough of that. Enough. So read your book. Ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you and you will not be led astray. Let the Lord lead you and guide you as you read. Fellowship with other believers. Forsake not the assembly. Find others who are also Holy Spirit filled. Then you will get what you're supposed to get out of the book. And not just riddles and quotes and what, whatever your uh, mistaken perception is of the Bible. It's, it's the living word of God, a 3D book, nine dimensional. I hate to call it a book. The power of it. You stick your finger in it and just open it up for a word and it's going to land somewhere that you know was God sent. Then you have Freud and all these other jive turkeys, you know, manipulators of the mind who will come along and try to say, well, no, it's the way that you perceive it and it, it colors your world that way and blah, 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 whatever. And I like my world that color. I believe they're devils and deceivers and I don't believe them. Like they don't believe us, they ain't believers. So now let's, let, let's continue, I digress. But let's get this word in you. Chapter one, the purpose of tests. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, various trials, tribulations, challenges, tests. Count it all joy, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, develops patience. Trying your faith, testing you, Helps you to develop patience. Patience is a virtue and essential for those of you who want to be healers, who want to walk in the way of the great physician. You got to have patience for your patience. Pray for my patience. Brothers and sisters, you can always pray for my patience. Thank you. But let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. In other words, let patience do what it's gonna do over time. We're trying to rush everything. Maybe the Lord removed you from that situation for a time because he knew it was going to be too stressful for you. And so you have to be patient. Maybe he wants you to be healed or maybe he wants you to come into a new understanding of something before he puts you back in a similar position. Be patient. Let patience have her perfect work because, you know, people say practice make perfect. Patience is part of the process of the progress of perfection. But if you let it do what it's gonna do in time, like when you're training, whether you're training for raining or you out there hitting the heavy bag. Like when you're dealing with your significant other, take time, patience. Like when you're combing through the word of God, you know that the Lord has a word for you. He's putting something together You may patiently have to sit there and read and study and pray and fast until you get an answer. That's patience. Everything don't happen on double time, on double cheeseburger time, on fast food time. greatest things that the Lord has created in nature, the most beautiful things, they take time to form, don't they? Have mercy. The things of man, you know, you can pass by a vacant lot this morning in the morning time, and by the evening time when you get off, they be done threw up a dollar general. The things of man come quickly 
And they go quickly too, don't they? Have mercy. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, finished. That's what entire means in this respect, so that you may be finished. Some of you, you wanna hop out the oven, you ain't done. Be patient and sit in that fire. Let the Lord try you in that fire so you can come out pure golden brown. But let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That means lacking nothing. You're always gonna want something. As long as you're in that flesh, you're gonna want something. All these things. Fast. Every Friday, Friday fast. What's the rules and regulations? Get it how you live. What the Lord tell you. Sun up to sundown, cool. Every Friday, Friday fast. Unless otherwise uh, stated. And support and pray for those who are going to be fasting on Friday, even if you cannot. You can't break a date, or maybe you have to break bread and fellowship and you will be participating. Okay. Let's continue. But pray for those of us who will be fasting regularly. Okay? And I think that's the better way to do that because I see some things happening here. Uh, watching how the enemy army is moving. And this is my favorite part. This is my favorite part. Strategy. Come on up the field. Let's get into it. I'm tired of sitting back in the headquarters looking at maps and blueprints and putting together plots and plans. Let's get on the field. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. I mean, once he give it to you, you know, you're not going to take it back. And it shall be given him, right? Well, when you're braiding down, um, I mean, you know, this is just my goofy goober logic. You're braiding down, okay? Those hair strands is locked down tight. They lock together. You upbraid them, you're taking them apart, I suppose, right? All right. I mean, the Lord knows the plans that he has for you to cause you to prosper. To bring you to a good and expected end. So when he gives a, th a thing to you liberally, okay, it is not his intention to take it from you. For one thing, he won't give it to you liberally, that means a lot, until he knows that you're gonna handle what you got. Mm -hmm. That's money or, or gifts or anything. Mm -hmm. okay. it says, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth, don't be wavering. Don't be waving and going on. Doing the water wave and the inchworm too. Inching your way across the flood. Wavering back and forth like Peter in the boat. Don't know which way to go. You don't want to do that. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. That's what it means to come boldly before the throne of grace, not to come before God like, God, you gonna give me this, you gonna give me this, thump you upside your head and knock you 30 feet. No, come with respect. You don't talk to your father like that. I bet you don't even try to call your father's name. Let's talk about it. Huh? I had a cousin one time, he called his mama by her name. Yeah, Un until he got so he got me about 10, 11, or 12, and he just saw how weird it was. He was the only one calling his mama by her first name. You don't call your mama by her first name, and you sure don't call your daddy by his first name. Hello? You picking it up off the floor. So you come in faith, wavering not. That means unwavering faith. That's what you're coming in, okay? The unwavering faith, that's the boldness, okay? And you ask, that's what 
the Lord said, he used the word ask. When I ask, I say, please. When I ask my father, I don't know where y'all was raised. Okay, some of y'all raised in the woods. Act like it. Jungle. Got most sense in the woods. Okay. Okay. But he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. There it is. Don't waver. Don't waver when you're asking for a favor. Don't be scared. Believe it. Believe you shall receive it. Believe that God is the giver of good gifts. And that he blesses and adds no sorrow to it. But let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Who? What man? The man is wavering back and forth. You ain't gonna get nothing out the Lord. It just told you right, champ. It's in the book, chapter one, James, verse seven. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Did you see that? Don't be wavering. Don't wake up one morning and, well, you know what? I think I'm gone. And then the next morning, well, you know, the Lord don't like that. Be ye hot or cold. He was lukewarm. He gonna spit you out his mouth. Make up your mind. Are you blessed? And why are you stressed? Look, you can't be both. Pick one. You gonna work or you gonna pray? Look. I mean, I don't know. Is the joy of the Lord your strength? If a merry heart does a body good like a medicine, what do a heavy heart do for a body? Somebody talk to me. Make up your mind where you stand, man. Oh, you that type. Everything's funny when your pocket's full of money. But nothing is a joke when your pockets is broke. Your face is balled up and your lips and jaws is super tight. Can't nobody say hello, goodbye, good night. Change your attitude. Ask in faith. Don't be hemming and hawing you talking to the Lord. Get that meal out your mouth. Talk straight. Father, he saw you. He already know. So you might as well come 1,000. I can tell you how 1,000 I've come to him before in my lifetime. I mean, the Lord talks to me. You know, people say, you hear the small, still voice, but people also say that it can take, it can be similar enough to your voice to where you recognize it, okay? And the Lord speaks your language, man. Trust me, trust and believe. Who you think be... <laughs> Lord be putting all these words in my mouth. I'm, I, I'm a quiet guy. I like to be quiet. I don't like to do a whole lot of talking. I don't like to do a whole lot of yapping. I really don't. I don't. I do this for y'all. I like to be quiet. I like to be quiet, watch my movies, read, write. I'm, I'm a quiet type. I quit laughing out there in TV land. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm so blessed that you lend me an ear, okay? And I really do try to be effective and not waste your time, okay? Now, right after, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord, chapter one, verse eight, the very next line, you've heard it many times. A double-minded man, and it says here, two-faced. This is about Janus, Gemini. I ain't never seen nobody with two faces. Thank the Lord. But it scared me half to death. What the other one gonna be? But that's what we call two-faced, right? That, that goes back to the deity of Janus or Gemini. And we're in the season of Gemini now. Person born today would be quote unquote Gemini. So we're in that season of double-mindedness and duality. Okay, be very careful. Lots of things are going on around you that maybe making you make some mind-blowing 
decisions during this heat wave. Wait a minute, is there something to that? Fine. So I'll write a secret gift. There you go, bam, Easter egg. Uh, yeah. But yeah, during, during this heat wave, we're gonna be making mind blowing decisions. I mean, I don't, I don't know about where, you know, what is where you at, it's 90 degrees. It was 90 degrees at, at noon, I don't know what it is right now. Hot, that's what it is. Atta, atta. Brother Charles, I'm recording live and direct, and so you will hear this on the recording. As soon as I get through, I'm gonna call you right back. Is that all right? Okay, all, all is well. Okay, well, isn't that something? Because I was just talking about test. Now, this is going to be on the record. It's recording live right now. That's why you hear me turned up. I'm turned up. All right. James chapter 1. Okay, and, and we in it to win it. So y'all pray for Brother Charles. You know he didn't, hey, that answer wasn't swift enough. Okay, so we know what time it is. Okay, what's understood ain't got to be explained. So um, we're going to, uh, uh, Brother, I'm going to, Chop it up with you as soon as I'm through, okay? All right, in a minute. Now, right on time, in accordance with the will and the way of the Lord, okay? When we operate by the Holy Spirit, operating in faith, in truth, in love, but believing. Okay, not just hearing, but believing and doing the word. Supernatural things happen. And Brother Charles uh, has not at all been stalled. Okay? Um, he has been doing a lot of uh, excellent work for the kingdom. And I request your prayers for him especially uh, now for him and his family as they embark on the next leg of their mission in the Great Commission. Okay? Just, you know, again, you know, everyone who reads, comments, and listens to these videos ain't a friend. Okay, so what's understood shouldn't, shouldn't have to be explained. Don't take all that. And this is warfare. And he is a young warrior. I ask that you pray for his strength and I ask that you pray against those who pray against him. Okay. Not just uh, darts and arrows coming my way. Darts and arrows coming Ladarian's way. Darts and arrows coming Brother Charles' way. When you are affected, again, you only attacked if the enemy really feel like you can win. Okay. When you are affected, you will be seen as a threat by your enemy, and then the enemy will take some sort of action. And when the action is prayer, and when you have proven yourself to have fervent and effectual prayer, and Brother Charles has done so, then those who believe in cursing step up to do their thing, right? So come against the witches and warlocks that aim curses at your brother and at your brother Ladera. He has a very unique gift too, you know, and what I'm seeing here for the nephews is they're going to be seeing here. They're going to be able to see. And perhaps they, they'll be able to see the things that it'd be too much for you and me, maybe. Perhaps. And the time is at hand where they're going to have something to see. Now all of this unrest, this long hot summer, this confusion, this teenage-like angst, this rebellion will lead to a rebellion. We just came out of six 
0616 and it is now 606 p.m. Let me show you the supernatural ways of the Lord. Now I paused this video from after uh, Brother Charles and I had conversed. You can hear the click when I paused the video and we talked for a good long while. He gave me a report that I have to give you some things from. <clears throat> I have to give you some information from his report as the body. Uh, it's it's important that you hear it. Now, what you do with the information, that's on you with the information. But I'm going to give you this information. Now, we looked at all these different things Gemini means. But it's also, whenever there's a 6-6 six, six something, six, there, there was a, a June 6, 1966. You know, the devils was partying on that day. Well, whenever there's a 6 something, it just so happens to be in June. We gonna get married in June. June is June is when they bring together them red and blue energies for wow. Okay, something big. Now, I believe the man of God, and I know that he hears from the Lord. He has proven it to me enough times, and he proves it in the prayer groups, and so. It is so. And I'm going to tell you, I believe that you should be prepared for something very huge. And folks, you know, folks keep saying this. Okay. And, and I thought that it should be in accordance with OBZ not leaving. Okay. Something happening to where it just won't be practical to remove him at this time. Just not, you know, it's just not a good idea at this time. There's too much going on, and okay. But by the time all that gets straightened out, it'll be time for Mother Goddess Hillary Clinton. She's gonna give them hell. But something, uh, uh, you know, what's the world coming to? Something is going to happen that will be explosive. very explosive on both coasts. And because we're in the time of transhumanism and transgenderism, another form of transism is fallen angels blending with men. We have some reports that demonic hybrid activity has been at an increase, especially during Mother Goddess season. That's what the Mother Goddess was to birth these demonic abominations and all of her representations are to are to do the same the birth demonic abominations well the fallen angel have a very special relationship also to what will be presented as the alien agenda okay, or terror coming from the sky because remember, at one point in time, they came down, quote unquote. Okay, now we're talking about realms and whatnot. But at one point in time, they came down. And when that red and blue energy comes together, that culmination, you can say one as representing the aggressive, one as representing the passive, coming together to create this new creation would be the Heru. The Osiris and the Isis coming together to create the Heru, the Antichrist. Lucifer fell from the sky like lightning. So this may be the time, you know, when more people are outside at night, more people are looking in the sky. This may be the time to cause some sort of terror to come from above. Comet, maybe a comet with some fallen angels on it. But that's what Brother Charles said that uh, he heard was a comet. I see all of the signs and symbols for some terror from above. And again, like I say, Brother Charles, his record is, is uh, very good okay. at hearing 
the most easily misunderstood. He can hear some very supernatural things, some things that, you know, a lot of people wouldn't even be inclined to believe. This is why the Lord is elevating him. And as you elevate in this game, this ain't like the boxing game or the rap game or nothing else. As you elevate in this game, you can become less visible in the physical to the average person, the average bear square. But you become more of a factor in the spiritual. And that means some different things than success in the world does for you. In this world, which the devil is the prince of. So, because of something coming that will cause great destruction and disarray and rebellion in the streets. Perhaps those in certain areas, impoverished areas, will be under worse martial law conditions than the others, and then this will cause for a blowback or a riot revolution. And then this brings in more cause for lockdown. That's why they allow for revolutions and riots to happen, just so they can bring in government, government control and lockdown. So don't fall for that. I understand, you know, not for an eye. how some folks feel, regardless of the situation. Sometimes you gotta be wise. It's better to be wise. The serpents and gentle as doves, turn the other cheek. Think, think about it. Come back later. But very heart does the body good like a medicine and the joy of the Lord is still your strength, okay? Don't let your heart fail you from fear. All revelation knowledge is supposed to be good knowledge, whenever something is revealed. Now, some folks are more and more physically comfortable now. And those, you know, those are the folks who, when it goes down, will be less spiritually comfortable. Some folks are more spiritually comfortable now. And, you know, they are already living in certain physical conditions and situations. They will be most spiritually centered and in their right minds. For those uh, 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 whom th uh, this will be a surprise, for those poor folks, and some of them not so poor folks, some of them you tried to tell, didn't you? Those folks is going to be the ones you going to have to watch. And it's about to go down. And, you know, don't uh, turn into a prepper and don't think that anything you can buy is gonna save your life, but be wise. Again, be wise. Have, have what you, I mean, you've been on a road trip before. Have different things you need for a road trip. Just have them. You never know when you might have to get on the road, Jack. Now, uh, like I said, I'm gonna deal with the, um, young man who was killed in Detroit after I get some more information on it, you know, me being here uh, to speak. On it without having more information than I do wouldn't be right. Okay. And, okay. Interesting too, uh, when you cut on your YouTube or when you go to the internet, you may see new commercial for, uh, the latest Warcraft. I'm about to tell you about my, my man, Seven Mile uh, Harry Monster. Very street guy. But for some reason, Warcraft caught his eye. He was very turned out on Warcraft. Now, you know, we was both Star Wars fans from that Aaron generation. And so, you know, we had that in common. He liked a little supernatural talk and, and, and loved for me to talk my metaphysical mumbo jumbo that would talk back then. But he was addicted to Warcraft. I mean, it was obvious he was addicted. He was wheelchair bound, but a way would be found for him to put his hands on that board and be all set up so he can sit there and play Warcraft for hours. 
Warcraft is something. I'm sure it's a, it's a, one of the video games that I, I know it pulls you into the occult and then therefore it allows for spirits to uh, jump into your life from off the screen. But I also think it's heavily laced with mind control. One of those things that's going to end up being like the Uber app did that they got from Michigan. <laughs> I believe it's lots of things like that in your phone. And I believe that they're about to soon turn on. Message. Gemini, the messenger. Watch the phone. Gemini, also the will and the dealing, the money. The money, something funny about to happen with the money. Every time you get some digital cash, take it out, turn it to something you can use. Immediately. Don't let it sit in there. I, I know how sometimes you do that. Don't let it sit in there. And I'm telling you, you know, we, we're coming to, the, coming to the time where, like it was, in Germany, at the rise of Nazi Germany, where, you know, what helped Hitler come into power. Things that got so poor, the money was blowing in the street like debris. It didn't mean anything anymore. The system had changed. Same is gonna happen here. So that's why I'm not saying, I'm not telling you go get it all out. If it's digital, as soon as some digital come, go turn it to cash. Cash money. Might be burning that for heat. Talking about turning into something you might need. Okay? Like a barbecue grill. Barbecue you so need. Everything else to go along with it. Charcoal, lighter food, you the thing. But my point is, yeah, you know, now, now is the time, I believe, to just be ready. Because this is. Again, Gemini is all about change up. One day to the next, you don't know how it's gonna flex. So with that being said, we're gonna uh, let a little bit more of this word be read. And then we're gonna put this one to bed. Chapter one, verse eight, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now, if you endeavor to step out on faith and do something big for the Lord, as a man thinketh, so shall he be. Don't start thinking from the victim perspective. Mm -hmm. So, let the brother of low degree rejoice in, in that he is exalted. Do you understand? We poor brothers, man. Oh, don't speak it over yourself. We're from the inner cities. We're from the ghettos of America. We wasn't born with silver spoons in our mouths and all this, that, and the third, and that's all good. I'm glad. But to some, I might just be a Detroit bomb, a man of low degree. You see? But I rejoice in the fact that my father has exalted me. Do the same on your journey. Continue to rejoice. Thank him right now. He chose you. Hey, if we was back in the old days of the prophets, you know, some of the other prophets in the tribe might be a little jealous. Well, how come he get to go? Because he, he prepared, he put in work, dedicated in his training, trained hard. That's why the Lord will pick the type of man that he'll pick. Somebody's not going to be quick to try to grab the glory. Somebody's not, not going to be too quick to think they can talk the best. What Jeremiah say? What Moses say? I'm slow of speech. Isaiah say, I'm a man of unclean lips. I be cussing them out. Hey. But you get my drift. So... That's who the Lord can bring up because you've not already exalted yourself on a pedestal created by the illusions and delusions of grandeur from this world. But the rich in that he is made low because of the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. So that a rich man, and you know, a wise rich man, you've been around someone of some celebrity and they'd be glad you're around because they say, you know what, man? I'm glad, I'm glad you're here, because you know you're the only one in here that say something like that to me. 
Well, I needed to hear that. Yes, I felt that before. That's that's a rich man who has, re, who has retained some wisdom along with his riches. Because as the flower of the grass, he shall pass away. So he needs to realize that with all these accumulated, at the end of the day, he, he will be made low. He will be brought low, six feet below. But it's good if he can keep his place and not be double-minded. Can't serve two masters. It will serve the spirit of fear, the spirit of the Lord. Perfect love casts out all fear. The Lord puts you in that position because of his perfect love for you. Let's continue. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth. So shall, so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. So all, all that beauty. You know, same thing make you laugh and make you cry. The same sun that rises with burning heat and withers the grass. Eventually suns burn out too. Sun goes down too. What goes up must come down. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. He will also fade away like all of those things, all of those other things created, all the other created things. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Now, just like we see in chapter one, verse two, we see my brethren, Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Thank you, Lord God of glory. Holy Spirit, guiding. Thank you, Father. Here we see temptations, uh, uh, diverse temptations. Temptations is meaning trials. The Lord will not tempt you, but he will try you. Okay? This is the language of anguish. Anguish. But blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, see, there's proof as to what temptation means in the verse. If you know how to read this book, it can't. I mean, come on. Come on. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. So to prove what it means, right behind it. For when he is tried, again, referring back to chapter 1, verse 2. So when that man is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Well, the time is close at hand to receive your crown. The time is close at hand. So obey the word. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. But lead us not into temptation. Again, you know, you're asking for the Lord not to allow for you to fall into a, a, a bad trials and tribulations and whatnot. So now let's be clear. No contradiction in the word. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. So lead us not into temptation does not mean that God tempts man. Jesus. I mean, Lord, as you're leading me. Please lead me away from these trials and different tribulations. And sometimes the answer is wait, sometimes the answer is yes, and sometimes the answer is new. Let's continue. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. That's when you become tempted. That's when it's time for a try. You get tried, well, we ain't sure about this. We'll try it. Try it. I ain't sure if this shoe will fit me. Try it on. So a man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed by things of this world. That is how you define when a man is tempted. And that also has a lot to do with why we get tried. 
again. You're tried because you need to be tested out. Let me test this out here. And it's not because, well, it's not going to cut the mustard. That's by your free will. Can you cut the mustard? Will you keep the right attitude throughout the test? Throughout the trial? And as it uh, uh, presents itself throughout the temptation. Because along the way, the adversary will try to put things in your way. And, you know, not always things that uh, look so bad, but things that look good to you and make you want to stay. You know what you like. Then, when lust hath conceived it, when lust hath conceived, have you conceived anything through lust? Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. And it's the Lord's will that none should perish. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift, every good and perfect gift, okay? Not just because it looked good. It really has to be good and perfect inside and out. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. Overstand that. The Father of lights. Light bears a perpetrator and shines forth a false light. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Unlike this time of turn, turn, turn. You know what season this is. Season of high treason. Season of making strange change for no reason. Let's continue. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. The Lord created much, but when he made us, he made something hard to touch. Mercy. Very special. Top level offering. To creation and to civilization. We were to be a gift, stewards of the planet, but a blessing to the fallen angels and their adversaries, excuse me, and their agents, our adversaries, the many different walks of life and death started messing and started getting in to the mix, started getting into the picture. And, you know, of course, nothing surprised the Lord, but. It was by free will that man got his suffering in jail. Let's continue. So we were begat with the word of truth. How many things are created using words of lies? Listen to any rap by Drake. I know you know. Faith obeys the word. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, or any of them for that matter, nowadays, they're all just telling lies. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Husbands, very important. Wifeys too. Be nagging. Signify. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. The wrath of man worketh not, it does not produce the righteousness of God. Man's wrath. It produces quite the opposite. Riots, rebellion, that's man's wrath. Anger over situations and over the power structure, injustice, man's wrath. Labor and unrest in Egypt, man's wrath. It does not produce the righteousness of God, but very different and opposite effect. It produces a very demonic atmosphere. That's why we're going to see things manifest soon. 
Yeah, yeah, in the physical realm. That are already here spiritually. Don't take CERN. Too concerned about CERN. Pray against the rituals that are done every night to bring forth demonic hybrid children. Pray against the demonic hybrid children that have already been created, being made manifest in the physical. Sounds crazy. Okay, I don't care how it sounds. You can do it or not do it. But I think it would be a good idea. Okay? It's still, we're still. We will never be at a place where, I mean, show me a chapter and verse if I'm wrong, but we are still in a place where prayer can affect the situation, okay? Certain things are written, certainly. Certain things have to occur because of God's judgment. You know, it has to be just. So certain things have to, have to come down the line. Only fair, it's justice. But your prayer availeth much, still. James 5, 16, still. Fervent and effectual prayer. Still, okay? So don't stop praying. Okay? Pray, pray, pray for the Lord's mercy. Ask for the Lord's mercy and grace in his judgment. Let's continue. And, and, and pray for the innocent. Pray for the innocent. Maybe those prayers will come towards you when it really get funky and you don't think you're innocent. You know, you know, there's some, you know, there's some, there's some 1,000 folks that'll say something like that. But Lord, you know, I know I ain't worthy, but you know, please, please don't let the little kids and the elders have it hard during this time. There will be much to pray. You really want to know. But let's 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 continue here. So for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. And receive with meekness the engraved word, the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. It should be engrafted, engraved, and written on the tablet of your heart. But lay apart all filthiness, vileness. Really, a lot of what gets promoted <laughs> soon soon as the weather breaks, right? All of those nasty behavior and, and nasty speech. Things that go against the righteousness of God. Lay apart all those things so that you can save your soul and get into the word. Receive it with meekness, not with a, a, a boldness. I, I know what it say. I know it don't say this, it don't say that. You don't halfway know your name. Some of you. Don't know if you left or if you came. For if any be a hearer, excuse me, let's go back. 22. But be ye doers of the word, word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Have burnt. You know that happened. Look in the mirror. Think, think you're looking good today, you feeling yourself? Put on a, put on a little smell good. Make sure your quaff is dead. Mm -hmm. Got on your Friday best. It ain't Sunday best no more. It should have never been Sunday best, but at least it was for church and not the club. But you put on your Friday best. And burger. 
and look in the mirror and all sorts of thoughts of pride and oh yeah, I'm gonna do this tonight. Oh yeah, I'm gonna let it all hang out tonight. Oh yeah, watch, watch me, I'm gonna bring me one home tonight. Oh, in the mirror and, 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 and excuse me, only some of that is coming from you and your will. That's, you know, that's not explained there in the scripture, but we know this to be true, okay? The supernatural uses for a mirror and why it is such an enticing thing, why people put mirrors in certain places for illusion and effect because of the deception that can come from just a glance. Man behold himself straight away and walk away from the mirror and forget who he really is. He forgot who he really was. He saw that new do and the new shoe and the new whatever. New perfume or cologne or whatever. Those things and, and then you add a mirror to that and you, you will forget who you are. Another way of becoming double-minded and often uh, uh, a way that is found common among so-called entertainers. Gemini represents that. This was the word for now. Now, let's, let's go on here. Three more verses. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, that's what you should be looking at, to find yourself and see how you measure up, how you look compared to that. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful here. I mean, you look into the perfect law of liberty and then you stay into it. Some people look at it and it scare them right on back into the world. And then some of us, it's gonna be representatives, we scare them right back into the world even more. But I ain't never going back. I don't wanna be around y'all. Then they can bring out them old songwriters, secret uh, gospel type song. I'm all church style. What king are you talking about? Mercy, lots of kings. Okay. Put that no mind. Okay. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, you ain't scared. You take responsibility to whom much is given, much is required. You say, hey, let me have it. I'm ready for it, baby. Lay it on me. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Continue therein, living in it. The perfect law of liberty, the complete law of liberty. Cross reference John 13 and 17 and 2 Corinthians 3 and 17. Uh, to add on to that. But let's finish it 26 and 27. If any man among you, seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart this man's religion is vain that means you ought to be able to speak without certain vulgarities you ought to be able to control your mouthpiece as a man as a man you can't control your emotions enough to control your vocabulary Something is, something, something is missing, in my opinion. You know, it's, it's a lack of control there. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. And this is what we need to do. Get from out of your, your perfect places of comfort and get out there and talk to them young nephews. Go to the neighborhood church Oh, man, I don't, I don't rock with them, dog. You ain't got to join. Go fellowship with them. Is it people from the community down there? I ain't talking about no big... I ain't talking about Pastor Pope Chop's uh, 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 palace. I'm talking about the little shack down there. Say something wrong about them people. Oh, well, you know, they, they Presbyterian. I don't rock with them. Oh, do they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do they believe... Uh, uh, that he came in the flesh, that he rose. Uh, I mean, you know, is it really that, is it, would it be detrimental for you to go down there 
and praise the Lord with them. Being sure of the Lord they praise. That's understood. She had to explain some much. Folks, boy, help me. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this: to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction. They all in them, all in the hood. And the trailer park. And the boondocks. suburbs and to keep himself unspotted from the world trust me the world is trying to put spots on you polka dots on you checkerboard patterns too that's exactly what it will do to those who don't have a clue but of course that's none of you and I'm glad to be among you thank you for Lending an ear, and I thank you for all of the prayers and support and love that y'all show here. And just, you know, keep the young in prayer, especially, okay? They're going to have the hardest time. And, and those who will serve the Lord in these times, in these times to come. Pray for all of us, okay? All of us in service with a flock, all of us in service. We don't have that with a block, okay? Those who go up and down the street and preach. Okay? Shout out to my brother Dewey, brother minister Dewey. He's come, oh, so far, long way, you know. Qui-Gon is about ready to retire. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with, very pleased with the paddle when I had the longest. Obi-Wan. Almost at the point where, like Qui-Gon told him, you know, you're a much wiser and better Jedi than I'll ever be. And, uh, I'm proud to have him been part of your training. And it's about that time for you to take on one. Or, as the Lord so leads you, you know, to just go ahead and step out on your own. Okay? In a way that to me is unknown. And then you come back and teach me and so that's that's what I want uh, that's what I want to happen when it's all said and done that's what I want to happen when we do scrap it I want it to go down like that but still still more time left to scrap so keep us in prayer thank you for fighting the good fight with us here much love to all of you out there in the authority of the name of Jesus Heavenly Father I ask Lord that Everyone within the sound of my voice, Lord, that you would bind a double portion of the joy of the Lord to them, which is their strength, a double portion of a merry heart to them, Heavenly Father. Let not their hearts fail them for fear in Jesus' name, Lord. And bind a double portion of the courage of the lion of the tribe of Judah to everybody within the sound of my voice. And a double portion of Ephesians 6, whole armor of God and of the blood of Jesus Christ to wash away from them anything associated with fear and the spirit of fear itself. But you have not given us the spirit of fear. So I ask, Lord God, Lord, that you would bind a double portion of power, love, and sound mind to everybody within the sound of my voice and bind up the spirits of fear, anxiety, depression, rejection, isolation, uh, 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 any and every spirit that comes against the physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual health of your children or within the sound of my voice. And Heavenly Father, we ask that every cursing witch and warlock within the sound of my voice, Lord God of glory, be loosed from the demon that has empowered them and that that demon be bound up and cast down into the pit of the abyss immediately. And that before it's able to return or another sit in its place, that that one be bound up in everlasting unbreakable chains and cast down into the pit of the abyss, the dungeon of the dragon, or wherever Lord Jesus Christ prefers, according to his word, which we stand on. And Heavenly Father, I ask Lord God of glory that you would loose the angels that you have assigned to watch over 
those who, who your children who are within the sound of my voice, Heavenly Father, and bind them to them right, left, front, back, overhead and beneath them to let them be protected from all things seen and unseen and everything unclean in Jesus' name. And Lord God of glory, I would ask, Lord, that any witch or warlock within the sound of my voice who does not know the truth of the true and living God and who, and who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, that you would give them the opportunity out of your grace, mercy, and perfect love and out of your will that none should perish, Lord God of glory, and that you would show them the reality of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Messiah, that you would loose them from all folly and all intellectualism and all rebellion and witchcraft and sorcery in the name of Jesus, and that you would loose them from all the unloved spirits and all the spirits that uh, fight against their deliverance. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you would loose them from every spirit that comes against their discernment. And Lord, bind them all up and cast them all out and down to wherever Lord Jesus Christ prefers. And Heavenly Father, we ask, Lord God of glory, that you would increase us all in discernment in Jesus' name. Everyone within the sound of my voice, Lord God of glory. And we ask, Lord God of glory, that you would block any curses being sent out to have negative effect or to negatively affect the discernment of your servants in the name of Jesus, Lord God of glory, especially any of them sent toward Brother Charles, myself, Sister Kimberly, Brother Rob, or Brother Dan, uh, Brother Ladari, Brother Jerry, Brother Crystal, excuse me, Sister, uh, Sister Crystal and Brother Jerry, and, and, and all of the prayer warriors. In Jesus' name, we keep us in constant prayer. Uh, uh, bless Sister Fanubi, um, uh, uh, Tanti, Janine, uh, Sweet Pea, 1971, uh, Brother Chad, keep Brother Kevin in prayer. Pray for Brother Kevin Walker in the name of Jesus, Lord. Pray for his patience and his strength and his endurance in the name of Jesus, especially at this time. Lord God of glory, please. And Lord, keep Brother CJ in prayer. My main man, 50 grand again and again and again. CJ Silver from Philly, where the brothers get illy. <laughs> I, thank, I thank God for the extended family that you've given me in Christ, Lord God of glory. I love them all, Lord, and I just ask that you would bless them all, Lord, and, and uh, uh, bind to them supernatural favor and provision for every mission, great commission that you may send them upon, Heavenly Father. Increase Brother CJ in his in his prayer power. Okay. He used to be a prayer warrior. And his sister Charlene. And loose his sister Charlene in Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, from any and every spirit that would attempt to try to uh, 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 hinder her progress, to touch her in any way, shape, or form, or to cause her fear through touching her. And any spirit that has caused her night paralysis or night terror or that has touched her in the name of Jesus. She wrote me and said that uh while she was writing an email, a spirit was trying to uh, uh, touch on her. In the name of Jesus, I ask that that very spirit, Lord, you know who it is. We ask, Lord, that you would bind up that very spirit and any spirit related to it and every spirit sent to replace it. In the name of Jesus, Lord, right now, bind it in everlasting and breakable change and send it right back into the pit from whence it came. Or wherever Lord Jesus Christ prefers, according to his word. In Matthew 18 and 18 through 18 and 20, Matthew 21 and 22, Isaiah 55 and 11, Numbers 23 and 19, just to name a few. We ask you to bind those scriptures to this prayer. Bind those scriptures, Heavenly Father, to all of those listeners that are your children out there. And let it reach your very ears, Lord, and perform it for us in the physical realm. As we know, it's already done in the spiritual. We've touched in, uh, in agreement. We declare and decree it. So therefore, because we believe it in the power and authority of the name of Jesus, we've already received it. So we thank you with the highest praise we know. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Shalom. Right. This was from a story from June 7th, 2016. From Maui, from Hawaii News Now. The driver of an SUV that plunged 200 feet off a of Maui cliff has been charged with second-degree murder in connection with the crash that killed her twin sister. Alexandria Duval, 37, entered a not guilty plea in Waluku District Court on Monday. The crash is the latest twist in the bizarre lives of the twins, an infamous pair of yoga studio owners from Florida. Police 
Police said Duval, also known as Allison Dedal, she has an alias, and she's a twin. Let's continue. Police said Duval, also known as Allison Dedal, was driving the Ford Explorer that plowed through a Hannah Highway rock wall wow. and plunged off a sea cliff May 29th. Interesting. Her twin sister, 37-year-old Anastasia Duval. See, it's interesting. Alexandria and Alan and Anastasia. These were names that they took on, or these perhaps their names that they took on after joining the hookup, the sisterhood, the brotherhood. This case involves a devastating, heart-shattering tragedy for Allison and her family. Her sister is dead as a result of the events surrounding this charge, said defense attorney Todd Evans. The two women were fighting before the crash, according to witnesses. They said they saw an argument inside the SUV and the passenger pulling the driver's hair. The Ford Explorer suddenly accelerated, made a sharp turn into the wall and showed no signs of braking, according to court documents. Police and prosecutors haven't gone into details on why they believe the crash was intentional, but they did point out that Duvall was trying to leave the state when she was arrested Friday. The fear we have is that she could easily go to a country where we don't have an extradition treaty. She's already changed her identity once, so she could change her identity again and we wouldn't be able to locate her, said Deputy Prosecuting Attorney Emlyn Higa. Eddins said that Duvall was trying to head to New York to attend her sister's funeral and was not attempting to flee. The sisters opened two twin power yoga studios in Florida under the names Allison and Ann Dedow. The two abruptly closed their studios in 2014, leaving workers and clients in the lurch, leaving them out there bad. The sisters then resurfaced in, in Utah where they later claimed bankruptcy, citing hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. The Honolulu Star Advertiser reported that the sisters both have criminal records, including arrests relating to public intoxication. They were reported to have relocated to Hawaii several months ago. Twins were arrested for disorderly conduct and terroristic threatening on Maui on December 24th, 2015. Sounds like these, these twins are satanic ritual abuse victims or mind control. <clears throat> they failed to appear for court proceedings and bench warrants were issued. One of them also showed up at the Family Life Center homeless shelter at the beginning of 2016 asking for assistance. It seemed like a downward spiral of events that didn't make any sense. They have a lot of people that love them. So once you begin going through those mind control rituals and you begin to lose it, you will begin to spiral out of control and it will look as if uh, you're on drugs or something. They have a lot of people that love them, said Delia Souls. Delia Souls, S-O-L-E-S, the former manager of the Twin Power Yoga Studios in Florida. They were really fun. They have a lot of energy, bubbly, really personable. A judge denied a request for bail. The ball is due back in court on June 8th. So, and that was hawaiinewsnow.com Thank you again Natasha for turning us on to that excellent example of the news writer's secret during a season the season is Gemini so you will see stories like that oh, you got to